Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome out to Dripping Springs, Texas, here at Tiger Field. As we are excited to bring you this afternoon's Game 1 area matchup between your Westwood Warriors and the Smithson Valley Rangers. AJ Revelo here, excited to bring you this action, and after an exciting series last week against the Bowie Bulldogs, this time, though, I was talking to a fan up in the stands that, you know, it seems like we're going through the gauntlet. You know, we played Lake Travis, ranked number one in the state. We... Play Round Rock, who's I want to say was ranked 18th in the state. We had Bowie, who was ranked 17th in the state, and now we get to go up against the Smithson Valley Rangers, who are ranked 12th here in the state of Texas. As you can see, Coach Carter and Coach Kale for the Rangers are meeting up at home plate. We're almost set to get everything underway here this afternoon. As far as playoff seeding goes, winner of this game. Let me pull this up here. I actually had it all set up. And it's gone. Never mind. There it is. Uh, looks like San Antonio Reagan and Cedar Ridge, who are playing here at the Dripping Springs as well. They'll be every single game they're going to play is going to be right after ours. Uh, but it looks at like the winner of that game will play the winner of this series here between these two teams. Smithson Valley comes in district champs of 27 6 A. Their record overall is 13 and 1. Their one loss came back near the end of April against the San Antonio East Central Hornets. And of course, your Warriors come in three seed. Just behind Round Rock and Cedar Ridge in district. Last week, though, nice matchup between Bowie and Westwood as Bowie took game one in a heck of a 14-inning, four-and-a-half-hour game. And then talk about resilience as the Warriors won game two, four one, and finished off the Bulldogs in game three by a score of five to three. Smithson Valley, on the other hand, Came in with the Number sweep four, against San Antonio Brandeis. They beat them game one, four to three, and then absolutely clobbered them in game two Number by a score of 16 to six. Tim As you can hear, our PA announcing our starting lineups. We'll send it to them. Number we'll be right back. Two, at first base, David DeHoyos. Number nine, designated hitter, Garrett Brooks. Number 28, Catcher Ethan Gonzalez. Number 21 in left field, Christian Keller. Number 8 at third base, John Garza. Number 2 shortstop, Ryan Ruff. Number 12 at second base, Cameron Hodges. And number 17, your pitcher, Brandon Taylor, and the rest of the Rangers. The Rangers are coached by head coach Chad Kale. And now for the Westwood Warriors. Number six in center field, Jeff Haybert. Number 28 at catcher, Jack Brinson. At third base, number 12, Josh Astacio. Number seven, shortstop, Tate Joint. At second base, number 21, Matthew Gula. Number 17, first base and designated hitter, Reed Saxon. Number five in right field, Gus Wenlin. Number four in left field, Evan Dunn. And number 13, your pitcher, Ridge Morgan. 
The Warriors are coached by head coach Casey Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand and direct your attention to the flag in center field as we honor our country with the playing of our national anthem. National Anthem for you folks at home and no play ball. Always usually get that after. Kind of hit or miss now here in playoffs. So for those at home that maybe kind of missed it, defensively for your Warriors up on the mound. Getting the call to start off here is going to be Ridge Morgan, freshman. Catching is going to be Jack Brinson, first base, Reed Saxon, second base, Matt Gula, third, Josh Astacio, shortstop Tate Joint. Left field, Evan Dunn. Center field, Jeff Hebert. And right field, Gus Winland. For the Rangers, set to lead off is going to be number four, Kaysen Wells. Tim McGuillo will be batting second, along with David DeHoyos batting third. Now, I'm a big fan of transitive comparisons when you look at teams, just because it's always interesting to see kind of what happens and how everything plays out. So I was able to find the two teams that we have both played as far as Westwood and Smithson Valley. We're looking at the Coppers Cove Bulldogs and the Dripping Springs Tigers. Both of these teams were played in tournament play. All right, so Westwood came away with the dub over Coppers Cove by a score of nine to six. Smithson Valley beat Coppers Cove three to nothing. So three run victory, both the same. As far as Dripping Springs, that was a loss for the Warriors. Lost by one run, seven to six. Smithson Valley, though, beat Dripping Springs three to nothing. So, regardless of rankings, it seems like a pretty even comparison as we are about set to get this matchup underway. Before we do, though, folks, I want to give a big shout-out to Academy Sports and Outdoors, our Viap Live Spring Sports sponsor. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. So, set to lead off here at the top of the fourth. First, excuse me, top of the fourth, almost there, right? Top of the first is going to be number four, Kaysen Wells for the Rangers as Morgan with the pitch. It's going to be a bouncer down the first baseline. That goes foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. So no balls, one strike here for Wells as Ridge Morgan gets set. Here's the pitch. Is that one a nice heater right over the plate? Gets called for strike two. Count goes 0-2 as Morgan gets ahead early in the count. Wells getting set. Here's the pitch. Outside, trying to get him to reach, but no go. That's going to be ball one. Count goes one and two. Morgan shaking off the first call. Brinson likes the second. Here's your one-two pitch, and there's a hit and a bouncer straight back up to Morgan. That gets over Gula, trying to barehand it. Can't quite get to it. It's going to be a leadoff base hit here for Casey Wells, and the Smithson Valley Rangers are getting things rolling with one runner on and no outs here at top of the first. Next up, going to be number 19, Tim Aguayo. As he takes a look in the dugout and gets his last call. Taking his time with it. David DeHoyas is going to be on deck. He's in the batter circle getting warm. 
As Morgan gets set, looking for the call. Here's the first pitch to Aguayo. Last ball, a little too outside. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. Brinson doing a good job of keeping an eye on Wells over there at first. As we get reset here. One ball, no strikes. Kind of a little bit of a lead over at first by Wells. Not too bad. Here's the pitch for Morgan. Bunt shown at the high bunt, and it bounces foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes even one and one. Morgan makes his way back up on the mound. One ball, one strike, no outs here. Top of the first, one runner on for the Rangers. Morgan gets the call. Here's your 1-1. Over the top, but just a little too high. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and one. Miguel gets back in the box as he gets set. Quick throw down to first, not in time. Nice job by Saxon over there to get his glove down. Almost got the tag in there. We'll get reset and we'll do it again, though. Two balls, one strike, no outs. As Morgan gets set, here's the pitch. Outside, there's a throw down to first. Joint gets it, but he has to leap off the bag to pull it down. Able to get in his glove, but not able to get his foot on the bag in time or make a tag. It'll be a steal for Cason Wells as he's able to make it over to second. That throw was ball three for Aguayo as Brinson calls a quick time and makes his way up to the mound. So three balls, one strike, no outs here, top of the first. One runner in scoring position now for the Rangers as Wells quite a far distance away from that bag over at second. Morgan getting set. Here's the pitch to Aguayo. It's going to be outside for ball four, and Aguayo will get walked on over to first. There's the first two batters for the Rangers make their way on base. Up next is going to be number 22, now David De Hoyos. Number 22, David De Hoyos. There's the leadoff batters are lefties. De Hoyos. Alrighty makes his way on up into the box as he gets set to face off against Morgan. So no outs here, top of the first. Two runners on now for the Rangers. As Morgan gets set, quick check over at second at Wells. Takes a double and a time called by De Hoyos. He wants uh, Ridge to think about it just a little bit longer as he makes his way back into the box. Morgan. Waiting the call. Two runners on for the Rangers. Here's the pitch. It's going to be outside, and nice job by Brinson to keep that in front of him. That was way outside on the right. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. and oh. As the Rangers get a quick dugout warning. They get reset here. One ball, no strikes, no outs, and two runners on. The Hoyos gets set. Morgan. Likes the call. Here's your 1-0 pitch. It's going to be a slider just a little too far outside. Ball two. Count goes 2-0. Oh. De Hoyos gets reset. Two balls, no strikes. Two runners on here for the Rangers. Here's the pitch for Morgan. There's a big hit towards left field. That's going to drop right in front of the left fielder. The throw is in time, but not before one run comes across. And Wells is able to leg that one out. He puts the Rangers up early. One to nothing. Now it's out for the that Rangers. That was a base hit for De Hoyas. So here Brooks. comes number nine, the designated hitter, Garrett Brooks. He's hitting in place of pitcher Brandon Taylor for the Rangers here this afternoon as he makes his way up into the box. Two runners on, no outs. As he gets set to face off against Ridge Morgan. Morgan gets the call. Here's the pitch. And there's a little booper that makes his way up to a second to Gula. Gula cannot make a throw as he was going to throw it to second. 
wasn't going to make it in time. And then by the time it looked at first, it wasn't there either. That's going to be an E4 for Brooks as he'll make his way over to first. De Hoyos will make his way over to second. And Aguayo will make his way over to third. As Coach Casey's going to call a quick time and make his way out to the mound. Next up to bat for the Rangers is going to be number 28, Ethan Gonzalez. As all the runners make their way over to have a chat with Coach Kale on the right side for the Rangers. There we go. I was going to say, why is Christian Keller up there? That's number 21 for the Rangers. He was just holding the bat for Gonzalez. So meeting on the mound is done. Runners are going to return. No outs. Top of the first and bases loaded for Ethan Gonzalez. As he gets ready to make his way into the box. Next up to bat is number 28, Ethan Gonzalez. Well, again, folks, the winner of this one's going to go on to face Antonio Reagan and Cedar Ridge winner. As we've got two coaches from them. Looks like they're filming some game film right now, getting set off for the next round. As Morgan looks for the first pitch to Ethan Gonzalez with bases loaded. A swing and a miss will be strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike, no outs, and bases loaded. Morgan waits the call. Likes the first thing he sees, he gets set. Here's the pitch to Gonzalez. The breaking ball that gets a little too low, that'll be ball one. Count goes even, one and one. So Tim Aguayo for the Rangers is at third. David DeHoyos is at second. Garrett Brooks is at first. Ethan Gonzalez is at the plate. So he gets set. It's one ball, one strike, and no outs. And Morgan's going to have to step off. Didn't like his footing there. He's going to get reset. Morgan gets set. Here's the pitch to Gonzalez. And there's a bounce down the first baseline. Goes foul immediately, though. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. Gonzalez stretching a little bit outside the box. He makes his way back in. One ball, two strikes, still no outs here. Top of the first and bases loaded for the Rangers. Morgan gets set. Here's the pitch. As a high fly ball goes foul behind us into the parking lot. That'll be a foul. The count will stay one and two. We'll just reset and do it again. As the wind picks up ever so slightly, as you can hear it, folks, it's a cool 72 degrees here in Dripping Springs. Perfect baseball weather. As Gonzalez gets set, Morgan gets set. Here's your one-two pitch. Breaking ball right over home plate. That'll be strike. Whoa, nope. Guess that was a little too inside for our umpire. That'll be ball two. Count goes even two and two. That one looked good from up here, folks, but we'll get reset and we'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes, no outs here for Ridge Morgan. As he's facing off against Ethan Gonzalez at the plate. Bases are loaded for the Rangers. Morgan set. Here's the pitch. And there it is. That one hits home plate. As Gonzalez will get caught looking for out number one. Has some words for our umpires. He didn't like that call, but makes his way back to the dugout. Has the first out here at the top of the first. Number 21, Christian Gets put in the books. Next up is going to be number 21, left fielder Christian Keller for the Rangers. Base is still loaded, and one out here top of the first. Keller gets set. Morgan set. Here's the pitch. He's going to catch the inside edge for strike one. Count goes 0-1. Keller back in the box. Morgan waiting on the call. No balls, one strike, and one out. Here's the pitch from Morgan. Keller gets a piece of that one that goes into right field. Getting underneath it is Winland, and it's going to go over his head to the fence. It bounces over the fence. It's going to be a ruled double. As two runs will come across. As Aguayo makes his way, so does 
De Hoyos. Brooks will go ahead and advance to third. He'll be held up. Again, a rule double for Keller. Next up is number eight, John Garza. He drives in two runs. And the Rangers extend their lead three to nothing. Next up to the plate is going to be third baseman number eight, John Garza for the Rangers. Runners on second and third now, so two in scoring position with Brooks at third. Keller at second. Morgan with the pitch. He's going to catch the top of the plate there for a strike one. Count goes 0-1. So no balls, one strike, and one out here for Ridge Morgan. As he awaits the call. Two runners in scoring position on second and third. With John Garza at the plate. Shakes off the first, likes the second though, and here's the pitch, and Garza playing his hit game, gonna step out and stretch a little more as he gets back into the box. Morgan, awaiting the call. He's set, here's your 0-1 pitch. Garza watches that one. That one's going to be too low for ball one. Count goes even, one and one. So one ball, one strike, and one out. Garza gets set. Morgan gets the call. Here's the one-one pitch. Well, that's going to be low and inside for ball two. Count goes two and one. Two runners on here for the Rangers. Two balls, one strike, and one out. As Morgan gets set, here's the pitch to Garza. He gets a piece of that one on the third baseline. It's going to stay fair as Brooks will walk his way in. Keller will round third. Garza will make his way to second with a two RBI double. As he's able to drive in the remaining base runners. And the Rangers extend their lead five to nothing. Next up to the plate is going to be shortstop number two, Ryan Ruff, as Coach Carter makes his way out to the mound again to have a chit chat. So far, five runs batted in for the Rangers off of five hits. And only one out here, still top of the first. And as Coach Carter makes his way back to the side. And so far the error I clocked over for Garrett Brooks was actually scored as a run by our scorekeeper, so we'll Score it the same. As Ryan Ruff makes his way into the box to face off against Ridge Morgan with one runner on now in scoring position after that double by John Garza. Morgan gets set. Here's the pitch to Ruff. And that's going to be too low for ball one. Count goes one and him. Ruff makes his way back into the box. One ball, no strikes, and one out. Morgan awaits the call. Quick check over at second at Garza. Here's the pitch. There's a hard hit down the third baseline. Goes foul immediately for strike one. Count goes even, one and one. Ruff back in the box. One ball, one strike, and one out with one runner on. Here's the pitch from Morgan. That was going to go right over home plate. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two here for Ryan Ruff. Jared Hyman in the bullpen for the Warriors. Looks like he's getting loose. Ryan Ruff. Getting set. One ball, two strikes, and one out. Morgan with the pitch. A swing and a miss as that was in the turf, if you will, but that's going to be a strikeout swinging for out number two, which is going to bring up number 12, 
Now batting Cameron number Hodges. 12, Cameron Hodges. Hodges makes his way into the box with two outs and one runner on for the Rangers. Morgan looking to get out of this inning without giving up another run if he can. So far, five have come across for the Rangers. They lead five to nothing in the first as that one goes right over home plate. Breaking ball for strike one. Count goes up on one. No balls in one strike. Hodges gets set. Morgan waiting to call. John Garza is over at second as he's got a nice little lead over there. Morgan, quick check, and here's the pitch. That one looks like it might have been just a little outside for ball one. Count goes even, one and one. So runner still on second here for the Rangers. One ball, one strike, and two outs. And second baseman Cameron Hodges is at the plate here for the Rangers. Morgan gets set. Here's the one, one. A swing and a miss by Hodges. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. And Morgan, one more strike away from getting out of this one. As it's one ball, two strikes, and two outs. Hodges gets set. Morgan gets the call. Here's the one-two pitch. And a swing and a miss. They got Hodges reaching. It's a strikeout swinging for out number three. But the order does bat through for the Rangers. They're able to bring five runs across. They take an early five to nothing lead over your Westwood Warriors. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Welcome back, folks, to Tiger Stadium here in Dripping Springs, Texas, as the Westwood Warriors and the Smithson Valley Rangers finally finish a long top of the first. Rangers bring five runs across as they have a five to nothing lead over the Warriors, who have yet to have a chance at bat, though, as they get set to take on, it looks like, Brandon Taylor will get the call. He'll be on the mound for the Rangers. Batting order, though, for your Westwood Warriors sets the lead off. It's going to be number six, Jeff Hebert. Jack Brinson will be batting second with Josh Stasio batting third. Tate Joint will be in the cleanup spot batting fourth. Matt Gula right behind him. Ridge Morgan batting sixth. Reed Saxon in the seventh spot. Gus Winland batting eight. And Evan Dunn rounding out the order batting ninth. As Hebert makes his way out to the plate. It'll be the first batter to face off against Brandon Leading Taylor. For the Warriors, as the Warriors six, Jeff Hebert. have a little bit of a hill to climb here. As they look to pretty chip away at this lead for the Rangers. Taylor gets the call. Here's the pitch to Hebert. As Hebert definitely taking that first one. That goes right over the middle for strike one. Count goes 0-1. So no balls, one strike here for Hebert as he gets set. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss at that one. That'll be strike two. Hebert's falling behind early, 0-2. Jack Brinson should be on deck. He is. He's getting warm there on the left side of your screen. I think you can't see him, but it's no balls, two strikes here for Hebert. Here's the pitch from Taylor. I thought it was going to be too far outside. Ball one. Count goes one and two. Warriors, the home team here this afternoon. Tomorrow, we'll have another one here at Tiger Stadium where we'll actually be the away team. It's one ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. As Hebert swings and can't make contact on that one, he'll go down swinging for out number one. Making his way up to the plate now is going to be catcher Jack Brinson. As they give a quick... Next up, number 28, Jack <laughs> Love to see Brinson. it when Hebert will stop and have a talk with Brinson about what he's seeing at the plate. 
as he makes his way into the box. It's one out here, bottom of the first. Here's a pitch from Taylor. And Brinson again taking that one. It'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike and one out. Taylor set. Here's the pitch. Brinson gets a piece of it. It's a bouncer back towards Taylor as he gets it to toss the first. And that'll be out number two. Up next is going to be number 12, third baseman Josh now Astacio. Number 12, Josh Astacio. Takes his time making his way into the box. Two outs, bottom of the first. As Taylor gets set. Here's the pitch to Astacio. That one's going to be way outside for ball one. Count goes one and out. One ball, no strikes, and two outs here for Astacio as he gets set. Taylor with the pitch. Swing and a big hit towards right field. It's going to be high. It's going to slow down a little bit. That's going to fall into the glove of Tim McGuayo for out number three. And uh, end of the one, folks. The Smithson Valley Rangers have a 5 to nothing lead over the Westwood Warriors. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot All right, well, I'm just going to bring you folks back immediately after that. Not sure why that froze up on me. But welcome back, folks, here to Tiger Stadium. As second inning set to get underway here shortly between the Warriors and the Smithson Valley Rangers. AJ Revel here bringing you all the action live and as best we can. Ridge Morgan's going to be back on the mound for the Warriors. He'll be setting off top of the order with Cason Wells set to lead off, followed by Tim Aguayo and David De Hoyos batting third. Morgan looking to have some better luck this time. Fingers crossed here for a top of the order. He went through the whole order back in the first inning. Gave up five hits, one walk, and five runs. One with three strikeouts. Cason Wells had a leadoff single in the first inning. He gets set to face off against Morgan. Here's the pitch. It's going to be outside for ball one. Count goes one and no. Morgan set. Here's the pitch to Wells. That one hits home plate. That'll be strike one. Count goes even one and one. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch for Morgan. There's a high fly towards right field. Winland is going to go over his head again, and Wells will round first. He's going to go ahead and round second as Winland tosses it in to Gula, and he'll be held up. Slide into third is going to be dropped as that was almost brought in by Estacio. He went down for the tag and lost it on the tag. Going to lead off triple for Cason Wells. And the Rangers right back where they ended. So they got a runner in scoring position on third. As here comes number 19 right fielder Tim Aguayo up to the plate. Aguayo was walked in the first inning. That's Morgan. It's set. He's got one runner on. Cason Wells over at third. No outs here. Bot uh, top of the second, excuse me. Here's the pitch. There's a high fly. Comes behind us, and that's going to come right next to me. As that drops into the grass. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1 here for Aguayo. No balls. One strike. Morgan with the pitch. It's going to be outside and low for ball one. Count goes even, one and one. One ball, one strike. Morgan gets set. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be two inside, I believe. It'll be ball two. Count goes two and one. It's no outs. 
Top of the second, one runner on in scoring position at third here for the Rangers. And as Agoyo gets set, here's the pitch from Morgan. There's a high fly towards center field as Hebert goes over his head. Wells is going to make his way in. Agreo is going to round second, and he'll be held up at second as he'll have to make his way back. An RBI double as Wells is able to come across, and the Rangers put one more on the board. They lead 6 to nothing. Now at that, number 22, David DeHoyo. Coach Carter's going to go ahead and make his way out to the mound. We saw Hyman getting loose over in the bullpen back in the first, and that will do it for Ridge Morgan. As that should be Jared Hyman making his way up to the play, uh, to the mound. Excuse me. We'll verify here in a second, folks, with the number. As soon as he turns. He's a lefty, so that's got to be Jared. That is. So number it's going to be number 23, Jared Hyman, is going to be set to come in here for Ridge Morgan in the second inning. Morgan will come through. As Hyman wraps up his warm-up, he'll make his way out to the mound. No outs. Top of the second with one runner on as number 22, David DeHoyos, for the Rangers, makes his way up to the plate. DeHoyos did an RBI single in the first. He does have one runner in scoring position. As Aguayo has some wheels on him. We'll see what Hyman can do here as this is the first batter he'll face here this afternoon. As this breaking ball looks like it's a bit outside. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and oh. One ball, no strikes. As Hyman gets set. De Hoyos gets set. Here's the pitch. Yeah, the swing, that one goes foul immediately for De Hoyos. That'll be strike one. Count goes even one and one. One ball, one strike here for David DeHoyos. Jared Hyman on the mound. He's got one runner on over at scoring position in second. He gets the call. Here's the pitch from Hyman. Breaking ball to get the line down the third baseline. Foul. Rich Carter has to dance out of the way on that one. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes. De Hoyos gets set. Hyman awaits the call. Here's the pitch. And there's a high fly towards right field. Windling underneath it gets the out. Aguayo tags up and he'll make his way over to third. I thought it'll be a fly out to left for out number one. Well, 
go ahead and... Now up is number nine, Garrett Brooks. We'll give him a sacrifice fly on that one. Next up is going to be DH, Garrett Brooks for the Rangers. He's got Arguello over at third in scoring position and one out here top of the second. As Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be outside and low for ball one. Count goes 1-0. One, one ball, no strikes, and one out. As Brooks gets set, here's the pitch from Hyman. That's going to be a liner towards right field. Winland's going to get underneath it. Arreo's going to walk his way in. That'll be an RBI single for Brooks. And the Rangers add one more to their lead. Next at bat is number 28, Ethan Gonzalez. And that run will get tacked on to Ridge Morgan as he was responsible for that guy on base. Next up to the plate is going to be number 28 catcher, Ethan Gonzalez for the Rangers. With one out, top of the second. And one runner on. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball high and outside. Only ball one. Count goes one and zero. One ball, no strikes. Gonzalez gets set. Hyman gets the call. Here's the one zero pitch. As Gonzalez gets a piece of that one, it goes foul behind him immediately. It will be strike one. Count goes even one and one. One ball, one strike, and one out with one runner on as Jared Hyman's on the mound here for the Warriors. He gets set. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Gonzalez. Gonzalez swings and gets a piece of it. It goes foul. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. Gonzalez with a strikeout looking back in the first inning. Looking to change his luck here in this at bat. It's one ball, two strikes, and one out. Here's the pitch. And quick throw down over to first. As we'll get reset and do it again. Morgan shifted over to first base. We'll see if Reed Saxon stays in the lineup to bat. He's no longer out defensively. One ball, two strikes, and one out. Another throw down to first. This one almost in time. Just behind the slide there. We'll get reset and do it again. As Gonzalez gets set, here's the pitch from Hyman. As there's a liner towards Gula, a diving catch, it hits his glove, but he kicks it off the ground to second for the out, and throw to first for the double, not in time. But they'll get Garrett Brooks as he stopped. A nice job by Matt Gula as he dove for that one, was able to get a piece of it on his glove. But a nice recovery now to get that one over to second base. 21, Christian Keller. Gonzalez will reach on a fielder's choice with that one. It'll be a 4-6 for out number two. As here comes number 21, left fielder Christian Keller. He had a two RBI double in the first inning. He's got one runner on with Ethan Gonzalez at first, but I believe we have a pinch runner. I'll see if I can get that name here shortly for you folks. But here's the first pitch to Keller from Hyman. That one's going to hit the inside plate for strike one. Down goes 0-1. It's going to be number five, Drew Fogala is going to be the pinch runner for the Warriors. Or, excuse me, for the Rangers. Apologize. No balls, one strike here for Christian Keller. Here's the pitch from Hyman. It's a liner towards left field. It's going to be brought in by Dunn, who throws it immediately to joint. It's going to be a base hit for Keller. As he'll be held up on the single. Drew Fugala will make his way to second. John Garza. Which is going to bring up third baseman, number eight, John Garza for the Rangers. Garza did a two RBI double in the first. 
As he gets set, he was the last hit that was logged for the Rangers in the first inning. His first pitch is going to be outside for ball one. Count goes 1-0. Oh. Two runners on here for the Rangers in the top of the second with two outs. Drew Fagala's over at second. Christian Keller is at first. As Hyman waits the call, he gets it. Here's the pitch to Garza. Fastball hits the outside edge for strike one. Count goes even, one and one. One ball, one strike, and two outs. Two runners on. Simon gets set. Here's the pitch. Garza swings it. It's going to go down the first baseline foul. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. This time is called. Does that one hit the fence line and bounced back into right field? So we have to get somebody out there to pick it up. Garza gets set. One ball, two strikes, and two outs as Jared Hyman. Quick check at second. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be inside, and that's going to hit Garza in the leg, I believe. Runners will advance. Uh, they're going to say it bounced behind him. It's going to be ball two. Count goes even two and two. The runners did advance on that one. So two runners in scoring position now with Fagala at third. And Keller at second. Garza with two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Hyman with the pitch. There's a high fly towards right field as Wendland is working his way underneath it. And he brings it in for out number three. So two more runs come across here for the Rangers in the top of the second as they extend their lead over the Westwood Warriors. Seven to nothing. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back, folks. You'll be, you are listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, V-Y-P-E. Brandon Taylor is going to be back on the mound here for the Rangers as number seven shortstop Tate Joint will make his way up to the plate. His first time at the plate this afternoon. As he awaits the first pitch from Taylor. As that one's going to hit the plate for strike one. Count will go 0-1. No balls, one strike here for Tate Joint as he gets set. Taylor, here's the pitch. Joint gets a piece of it, goes behind him, foul immediately. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0-2. No balls, two strikes here for Tate Joint. Here's the pitch. Joint gets a piece of it to bounce her towards second. It's going to be fielded. The throw to first is barely in time. That'll be out number one. Next up for the Warriors is number Next 21, up is going to be Matthew second baseman, Gula. number 21, Matt Gula. He's got one out here, bottom of the second. And the Warriors still have seven runs to overcome here, so that molehill is turning into quite the mountain now as he awaits the first pitch from Taylor. That one's going to be just a bit outside for ball one. 
Count goes 1-0. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch. The fast ball hits the inside for strike one. Kill will go even one and one. One ball, one strike, and one out. Here's the pitch from Taylor. There's a swing and a miss by Gula. Will be strike two. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes here from Matt Gula. Taylor gets set. Here's the pitch. Gula swings and knocks that one behind him. Count will stay one and two. As Gula makes his way back into the box. One out here, bottom of the second. Taylor gets set. Here's the one-two pitch. It's a little bit outside for ball two. Nice job by Gula to sit tight and not make an offering. Count will go even at two and two. As Gula gets set, pitch from Taylor. There's a swing and a liner right back at him. Best second base into center field. A base hit for Gula. As he'll make his way over to first on a single. And the Warriors starting to look a little alive now as here comes Ridge Morgan up to the plate. Now up. Morgan 13, took over for Saxon at first Morgan. after starting on the mound here for the Warriors. It does look like Reed Saxon is going to go ahead and hold the DH spot as he is in the batter circle getting loose. So one out, one runner on. Here's the pitch to Morgan as that one is a fastball over the plate for strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike as Morgan gets set. Matt Gula's over at first. Here's the pitch to Ridge. As the bouncer down the third baseline, that's fielded. Throw to second is in time. Trying to turn the double, and they do. As that'll be a 5 4 3. Gula will be the second out, and Morgan will be the third. And just like that, folks, the second inning is done. After two here in Dripping, the Smithson Valley Rangers have a 7-0 lead over your Westwood Warriors. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back for the third inning. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. After two, the Smithson Valley Rangers have a 7-0 lead over your Westwood Warriors. A.J. Revel here, third inning, set to get underway as Jared Hyman will be back on the mound here for the Warriors. As you see him getting loose in your television, cell phone, or computer screen. Set to lead off for the Rangers is going to be shortstop number two, Ryan Ruff. Cameron Hodges will be batting second, and then top of the order with Kaysen Wells set to bat third. Ryan Ruff had a strikeout swinging back in the first inning as he makes his way up to the plate now. This will be his first time to face off against Jared Hyman, who came in relief for Ridge Morgan in the first inning. Or excuse me, second inning, sorry. Ruff gets set. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. It's a breaking ball right over home plate. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. As Ruff watches that one, I guess that one was too low. That'll be ball one. Count goes even 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike. Here, top of the third. Lead off batter Ryan Ruff at the plate. Here's the pitch from Hyman as there's a swing and a line down the third baseline. Goes foul for strike two. 
Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes. As Hyman gets the call. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a liner towards joint. Fields that one and he drops it out of his glove. The throw to first is not going to be in time as Morgan gets hit as he was trying to catch that one. The umpire is going to say he was safe. There are some fans yelling interference, but they're going to say he touched the bag before that collision as Coach Carter is going to stroll his way out just a little bit. Now batting for the Rangers, number 12, Cameron Hodges. And it looks like that will be the first error of the game is that we'll go over to Tate Joint on an E6. It's going to bring up number 12, Cameron Hodges, second baseman for the Rangers. One runner on and no outs here in the third as he shows bunt. That goes a foul on the bunt. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. Hyman, ready for the call. Hodges makes his way into the box. It's no balls, one strike, one runner on and no outs. Here's the pitch. Nope, it's going to be a throw down to first. Not in time. We see Hodges, though, show bunt yet again. So let's see if he reaches for that and does it a third time. As Hyman gets set. Here's your 0-1 pitch. Yep, there's Bunt. He pulls back just in time, it looks like. So that'll be ball one. Count goes even, one and one. Hodges gets set. It's one ball, one strike. Hyman gets the call. Quick check at first. Here's the pitch. Bunt shown again. Outside throw this time. Brinson doing a good job to get that one. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and one. So two balls, one strike as Hyman gets set. Quick check over at first. Here's a pitch, but again by Hodges. This time it goes foul, and Brinson making a barehanded dive for that one, trying to get the out. Couldn't quite get to it. That'll be strike two. Count goes even two and two. Kaysen Wells is on deck for the Rangers. He'll be set to bat next. As Hodges takes a look over at the dugout to await his call, makes his way in the box. Ryan Ruff is over at first for the Rangers. As Jared Hyman's on the mound. He gets set. Here's the pitch. As there's a bouncer towards Estacio. He gets set to throw to second. In time, the throw to first for the double. Goes over the head of Ridge Morgan. As there's a dive back to first by Hodges. As he makes it just in time. Ryan Ruff, though, will be out number one. As Hodges will reach on the fielder's choice. Now for the so Rangers, top of the order now four, up Kaysen for the Wells. Rangers is going to bring up center fielder Kaysen Wells. So far he's two for two on the afternoon. Hit a single against Morgan in the first and then hit a triple against Morgan as well here in the second. His first time to face off against Jared Hyman though with one runner on and one out here in the third inning. It's going to be outside and low for ball one. Count goes one and zero. Oh. One ball, no strikes, and one out. As Hyman gets set, here's the pitch. Wells swings and misses at that one for strike one. Count goes even, one and one. One ball, one strike, and one out. As Jared Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. That one's going to hit the inside, outside, excuse me, the outside side corner. <laughs> That one, a uh, nice little cutter as that came back in for strike two. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes, and one out. Quick check over at first. Here's the pitch. There's a swing, and that one's going to go foul right behind us. Why well, didn't park in the parking lot there? As that goes straight into the street. That'll be, would be a strike, but we're just going to stay at one and two, right? One ball, two strikes, and one out. As Hyman gets set, here's the pitch. There's a high fly towards right field. Wendland gets underneath it and pulls that one in. 
for out number two. As Wendland had a couple go over his head, so it looks like the Rangers are kind of aiming in that direction this now. Number 19, this time Tim he was able Arguello. to pull it in with ease for out number two, which is going to bring up right fielder number 19, Tim Aguayo. He's got one runner on and two outs as Hyman gets set. Aguayo so far is one for one. An RBI double in the second. There's a pitch. Runner takes off towards second. Brinson. Couldn't get the transition from the catch to the throw on that one as it's going to be a steal for Hodges. But that's okay. Just concentrate on this batter right now as Aguayo awaits the 1-0 pitch. It's going to be a little too low for ball two. Count goes 2-0. Two balls, no strikes, and two outs here for Hyman. As he gets set. Here's the pitch to Aguayo. It's going to be inside. That was a plate check if I had ever seen one. That's going to be ball three. Count goes 3-0. Oh. Count 3-0. Oh. Here comes Old Faithful. Fastball down the middle. As Hyman gets set, here's the pitch. And there she blows. That'll be strike one. Count goes three and one. So one runner on here for the Rangers. Cameron Hodges over at second. It's three balls, one strike, and two outs. Tim Aguayo at the plate. Here's the pitch from Hyman. And that's going to be too low. No, that was over home plate. That'll be ball four. As Aguayo will make his way over first. Now so two runners on now here for the Rangers. David here comes first baseman, number 22, David De Hoyos. De Hoyos is one for one. He had an RBI single in the first and had that sacrifice fly in the second. As he gets set with two runners on and two outs, here's the pitch. Swings to the first thing he sees, and that goes behind him foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes on one. No balls, one strike, and two outs. Jared Hyman's on the mound. He awaits the call. There are two runners on for the Rangers. Here's the 0-1 pitch. As De Hoyos almost swings at that breaking ball, but pulls back just in time. That'll be ball one. Count goes even, one and one. One ball, one strike, and two outs. There's a swing and a chopper behind him. Foul. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. So De Hoyos is at the plate currently here for the Rangers. He's got two runners on in first and second. It's one ball, two outs, and two outs is Jared Hyman. Is one more strike away from getting out of this inning without giving up a run. So here's the pitch. It's going to be inside and low. That'll be ball two. Count goes even two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. As Jared gets set. Here's the pitch. And there's another pop fly behind him that goes foul. Count will stay even at two and two, and we'll get reset, and we'll do it again. Up on deck for the Rangers is going to be number nine, the DH, Garrett Brooks. He'll bat next if De Hoyos can get on base. And as Jared Hyman gets set, here's the 2-2 pitch. There's a swing and a high fly towards right field. Winland trying to leg it down, gets underneath it, and pulls it in for out number three. And that'll do it, folks, for the top of the third. Smithson Valley unable to bring any runs across. They leave two stranded.
but they maintain their 7-0 lead over your Westwood Warriors. We'll take a short break. And we'll be right back, folks. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Welcome back, folks. Bottom of the third will be underway here in just a few moments. Jared Hyman has an outstanding third inning as he allows no hits and no runners to come across. He does walk a couple and an error allows some runners to get on, but otherwise comes out of that one unscathed as the Warriors will get set to make their way out, out to the plate and hopefully chip away at this Ranger lead. Set to lead off for your Westwood Warriors is going to be designated hitter Reed Saxon. Gus Wendland will be batting second with Evan Dunn batting third. So far, just one hit for the Warriors after Matt Gula hit a single in the last inning. Now a bat for the Warriors, designated hitter, number 17, Reed Saxon. He makes his way up to the plate. Brandon Taylor is going to be on the mound for the Rangers. As he gets the call, here's the first pitch to Saxon. And Reed gets a piece of it. It's a bouncer towards first, and Taylor is able to scoop it up and tag first for out number one. Now we're back. Next number up five. is going to be left Gus right fielder, Wendland. excuse me. Number five, Gus Winland. He's been busy defensively so far this afternoon. He's got one, two, three, four. He's responsible for four outs in his area of the field. As he gets set to face off against Taylor, swings at the first pitch and can't make contact. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike and one out. No runners on here for the Warriors. Here's the pitch. There's a high fly towards shortstop. As it's going to be brought in by Ryan Ruff for out number two. Now batting is number four, Evan Dunn. Which is going to bring up left fielder number four, Evan Dunn. If Dunn can make his way on base, top of the order will be due up with Jeff Hebert set to bat next. Dunn, first time to face off against Taylor this afternoon as he awaits the first pitch. It's going to be a fastball right down the middle. Definite take on that one. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike and two outs. Dunn gets set. Here's the pitch. That's going to be inside for ball one. Count goes even, one and one. One ball, one strike, and two outs here for Evan Dunn. Here's the pitch from Taylor. That's going to be outside for ball two. Count goes two and one. Two balls, one strike, and two outs as Taylor with the 2-1 pitch to Dunn. Dunn gets a piece of that one. It bounces towards third. It's brought in. Dunn trying to leg it out and cannot beat the throw out as it gets there just in time. It'll be a 5-3 for out number three. And that'll do it for the third inning. So after three, the Rangers hold on to their 7-0 lead over the Westwood Warriors. We'll be right back, folks, for the fourth inning. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com.
Welcome back, folks. Fourth inning sets it underway shortly. Before we do, though, want to give a big shout out to our Vibe Live Spring Sports sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Academy Sports and Outdoors, your Vibe Live Spring Sports sponsor for 2021. Back on the mound is going to be Jared Hyman for the Warriors after he was able to hold the Rangers to no hits and no runs in the third inning. He gets set to face off against leadoff batter. It's going to be number nine, the designated hitter, Garrett Brooks. Right behind him will be catcher Ethan Gonzalez. And then left fielder Christian Keller set to bat third. As Brooks makes his way back in. Hyman gets set. Here's the first pitch. A swing, and it's going to be a bouncer. Morgan's going to get it. And Ridge will get the tag for out number one. Now batting batting second here for the Rangers. It's going to be number 28, Gonzalez. Ethan Gonzalez. Gonzalez so far is 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Had a strikeout looking back in the first and was able to reach on a fielder's choice. In the second, there's one out and no runners on as Hyman gets set. There's the pitch to Gonzalez. And he's going to step off here for a second and get reset. Gonzalez isn't going to move from the box as Hyman with the pitch. It's going to be outside. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0 and here for Gonzalez. It's one ball, no strikes, and one out. Jared Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. It's a breaking ball over home. Gets a little too low. That'll be ball two. Count goes 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes, and one out. Jared Hyman set. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball three. Count goes 3-0. Ethan Gonzalez hugging the plate just a little bit. And these throws are being outside by Hyman as a result. As it's three balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch. Old faithful. Nope, a little too far outside. That'll be ball four. And Gonzalez will make his way over to first with one out here in the fourth inning. Next up to bat, left now fielder number, number 21. 21. Christian Keller. Christian Keller. I'll let the PA finish. <laughs> Keller makes his way up, two for two on the afternoon, a two RBI double in the first and a single in the second as he looks at the Ranger dugout to get a call, makes his way into the box. There's one out with one runner on. Drew Fagala did come in as a courtesy runner here for Gonzalez at first. There's Jared Hyman with the pitch. Swinging a liner towards third. Astacio gets it, throw to second in time. Gula to first. Morgan gets it, and they turn the 5-4-3 double play. And just like that, folks, we are done with the top of the fourth. I'm going to have to mark my book here. And that'll do it, folks. Rangers scoreless and hitless here in the fourth inning. Bottom of the fourth. We'll stick around here. I don't feel like taking a commercial break. So we'll stay here. Let me change my board for you folks at home. And let's do something fun, yeah? How about a This Day in Baseball History? So something I like to do at any game I get to call is a This Day in Baseball History. Just some fun baseball knowledge. So how about this? On this day, May 13th. And oh, don't do that. May 13th, 1929. For the first time in Major League history. Teams are wearing numbers on their jerseys when the Indians host the Yankees at League Park in Cleveland. The numbers will become a permanent fixture on each club's attire after that. So numbers didn't show up on jerseys until 1929. So Warriors in a good position now still have yet to bring a run across. The Rangers have a 7-0 lead, but prime opportunity now is Jared Hyman's doing some work. Allowing no runs in his two innings of relief of Ridge Morgan so far. And set to lead off. Here the bottom of the fourth is going to be number six, center fielder Jeff Hebert. Jack Brinson will be right behind him and Josh Astacio batting third. So top of the order. As Brit, uh, Hebert makes his way around behind home. Brandon Taylor now is still on the mound. As he's six, having just Hebert. as good of a showing as Hyman is so far. Hebert makes his way up so far. 0 for 1 with a strikeout swinging back in the first inning. 
Taylor gets set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be inside for ball one. Count goes 1-0. Oh. So one ball, no strikes. Hebert awaits the pitch. Gets a piece of that one towards left field. That one's going deep towards the fence, and it's going to be brought in by left fielder Christian Keller as he eyes that one. That'll be out number one, which is going to bring up catcher number 28, Jack Brinson, up to the plate. Now batting number Brinson 28. Had a ground Scott out in the Brinson. first. He is 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Brinson set. Here's the pitch. Hits the first thing he sees. Down towards short. It's going to be fielded. The throw to first is in time. And that'll be out number two. Now Next up with Number two 12, outs Josh here in the fourth inning. Going to be third baseman, Josh Astacio. Astacio had a fly out towards right field in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. His second time at bat this afternoon. As he gets set, here's the pitch. And Astacio, too good not to swing at the liner towards short. Throw to first, and another 6-3 for out number three. As they are giving Taylor a nice easy outing. That was one, two, three, four pitches for Taylor and the Rangers here in the fourth inning. They're going to have to work on getting this pitch kind of a little bit higher as the game goes on, but that'll do it. And after four, the Rangers maintain a 7 0 lead over the Warriors. We'll take a short break, folks. Again, we'll be right back for the fifth inning. You're listening to Westwood Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Fifth inning. Set to get underway here shortly for those just joining us. Welcome out to Dripping Springs, Texas here at Tiger Stadium. As we've got area round of playoffs currently underway with your Westwood Warriors and the Smithson Valley Rangers going at it here first. Cedar Ridge and I believe it's San Antonio something. San Antonio Reagan. They'll be set to battle it out next. The winner of our series will go off to face the winner of their series. The All those Number games eight, being held here at Dripping Garza. Springs. But Jared Hyman looking pretty nice and warm and comfy on the mound. He's going to be getting the call here in the fifth inning. He'll set to face off against Garza. That's a high fly foul for strike one. Count goes 0-1. John Garza, the third baseman for the Rangers. He is 1-2 for two on the afternoon with a 2-RBI double in the first and a fly out towards Winland in right field in the second. And the next pitch is a bouncer towards Astacio. He gets it, takes his time, throw to first, and Morgan gets it. A 5-3 for out number one. Next number up to two, bat for Ryan the Ruff. Rangers is going to be shortstop number two, Ryan Ruff. On deck is going to be second baseman, Cameron Hodges. He's getting loose over to your right side of the screen. Ryan Ruff, though, he is 0 for 1 on the afternoon with a strikeout swinging in the first. So here's the first pitch from Hyman. It's going to be hitting the outside edge for strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike, and one out. Top of the fifth. It's Hyman with the pitch. Swing it's a high fly towards Winland in right field as Winland's trying to leg it out, gets underneath it, and brings it in for out number two. And you know, folks, the wind's not necessarily blowing very hard now his way. 12, it just seems like he is a fly ball magnet here this afternoon as 
He's getting a ton of work out in right field. Next up to bat is going to be number 12, Cameron Hodges for the Rangers. Hodges, 0 for 1. Got a strikeout swinging in the first. First pitch from Hyman. Breaking ball a little too low is the break there. It'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. So one ball, no strikes, and two outs. Here's the pitch. Swing, another high fly towards right field. That one's going to go foul as one of them was unable to leg it out. It actually went foul and bounced over the fence line into the softball field. But that'll be strike one. Count goes even one and one. And that one just hit a little too far foul as Wimbledon couldn't leg it out. Kind of a short field here, though, in Dripping Springs. It's 320 on the corners, but it's not the normal 400 in the center. You're looking at 375 as that pitch is going to be too high for ball two. Count will go two and one. As Hodges makes his way back into the box, Jared Hyman awaiting the call. Here's the pitch. Swing, and that's a high fly towards center field, so Hebert's going to get some action as he gets underneath it. And there it is for out number three. So the order goes down one, two, three here in the fifth inning for the Rangers and the Warriors. And get out of this one without allowing a hit nor a run. The Rangers still maintain, though, a 7-0 lead over your Warriors. And we'll hang out here, folks. Uh, we'll take a seat. So for those just making their way out. Area playoffs currently underway as your Warriors are taking on the Smithson Valley Rangers. Right after our game with a 7.30 first pitch, we're looking at San Antonio Reagan and Cedar Ridge looking to battle it out. The winner of that series will go on to face the winner of this series in the next round of playoffs. An interesting and as tough as the first round was, as far as the district that we had to play in 26-6A, everybody but one team was able to win their first round of playoffs. So Round Rock still gets to go up against San Antonio Johnson. They're playing over a uh, home and away at Round Rock at Northeast and San Antonio. And then game three, if it occurs, will be here at Dripping Springs. And then you've got us playing Smithson Valley. And then you got Cedar Ridge playing San Antonio Reagan. The only one that couldn't make it out of that one was Vista Ridge as they dropped their first series to the Lake Travis Cavaliers, the number one team here in the state. So set to lead off for your Warriors is going to be shortstop Tate Joint. Matt Gula will be right behind him with Mitch Morgan set to bat third. Tate's 0 for 1 on the afternoon, had a grounder towards second as he gets set to face off against Brandon Taylor. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. This joint took a big rip at that one and couldn't make contact. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. No balls, one strike. Here for leadoff batter Tate Joint. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be just a bit outside on the slider. That'll be ball one. Nice job by Joint to stay disciplined and not offer at that one. Count goes even, 1 and 1. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Another slider at the same location, but that time, though, it's going to be called a strike. As that'll be strike two. Cal goes one and two. Did you hear the crowd yell, that was awful. You know, kind of same location to me. But it's one ball, two strikes here for Tate Joint. He gets set. Here's the pitch from Taylor. So it's going to be another slider outside. Joint not offering. Ball two. Count goes even two and two. Two balls, two strikes. As Taylor shakes off the first call, wants the second. Here's the pitch. Fast ball outside. That'll be ball three. Count goes three and two. Here for Tate as he's able to work the count full. I guarantee that first call was a slider that Taylor there shook off. But it's three balls, two strikes. Taylor gets set. Tate joint awaits the pitch. Swings and gets a piece of that one, and that goes between the legs of our home plate umpire. It's a good thing he's got padding on. Count will stay full, three and two. Full count here for Tate Joint. Three balls, two strikes. Taylor gets set. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss by Joint. 
He will go down swinging. He's out number one. Next up to the plate, it's going to be Mom second Pat baseman, number 21, number 21, Matt Gula. Matthew Gula. Gula is one for one on the afternoon, hit a single in the second. And was left stranded there, though, for the remainder of that inning. Looks to get on base again and keep the streak going, if you will. As here's the first pitch to him. As it's a bounce down the first baseline, takes a second bounce foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes on one. No balls, one strike, and one out. Here's the one pitch to Gula. As he takes a big rip at that one. Can't make contact on that breaking ball. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0-2 as Gula falls behind early. No balls, two strikes, and one out as Taylor shakes off the first two. Takes the third. Here's the pitch. That's a fast ball that catches the outside of the plate. Gula will get caught looking for out number two. And it seems every time that Taylor shakes off the pitches, he's waiting for a fastball now call. Number 13, As Ridge Morgan. First baseman now, Ridge Morgan, makes his way up to the plate. No runners on and two outs here in the fifth inning. Here's a pitch to him. As he swings and gets that one, that's a foul ball over the fence line. It'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. Nope. He's got a... Heads up that I forgot to change my scoreboard. There you go, bottom of the fifth. So no balls, one strike here for Ridge Morgan. Two outs and no runners on. As Taylor gets set, and here's the pitch. Ridge gets a piece of it. It's a liner back up the middle. It's going to be fielded by the shortstop. The throw to first is in time. So that'll be a 6-3 for out number three. And that'll do it. The Warriors go down one, two, three here in the fifth inning. And after five, the Rangers still holding on to that 7-0 lead after a big first and second inning. Well, we'll go ahead and keep it here. Other playoff games going on around the area. Dripping Springs and San Antonio Jefferson there in the fourth inning. It's a one-game playoff with Dripping Springs holding on to a one-to-nothing lead. Game one between Elgin and Montgomery. It's in the fourth inning as well. It's in Bryan, Texas. Elgin with a one-to-nothing lead. And of course, you got us here going on with Smith and Set to lead off for the Smithson Valley Rangers. It's going to be top of the order with Cason Wells batting first. Tim Maguayo batting second. David DeHoyos will be set to bat third. Jared Hyman back on the mound. Again, he is looking pretty solid after coming in the second inning. So far in his outing, he has only given up two hits to the Rangers. for the Rangers. Number four, Kaysen Wells. As Kaysen Wells makes his way up to the plate. Wells so far is two for three on the afternoon. Was one time he didn't get a hit came up on his first time to face off against Jared Hyman, his second time here in the sixth inning. There's a swing and a high fly towards the right field. That's going to go really high. Wow, that was a high hit. That's going to go foul immediately, but that was crazy. I think that went into the softball field over their fence line. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1 here for Cason Wells. As Jared gets set, here's your 0-1 pitch. It's going to be a little too inside for our home plate umpire. That'll be ball one. Count goes even 1-1. One and one. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch from Hyman. Same position, same throw, too far inside. Ball two. Count will go two and one now. 
So two balls, one strike. Hyman with the pitch. And that's going to hit the outside edge for strike two. Count goes even two and two. It's two balls, two strikes. And, of course, leadoff batter, Kaysen Wells at the plate. Here's a pitch from Hyman and a swing and a miss as well. We'll go down swinging for out number one. Next up to the plate is going to be number 19 right fielder, Tim Aguayo. Number 19. Tim so Tim far is Aguayo. two for two on the afternoon. Excuse me, one for one. I apologize. He's been walked twice and hit an RBI double in the second. He was walked his first time against Hyman as that first pitch is going to be a little too much outside. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. Oh. So it's one ball, no strikes, and one out. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. Fastball down the middle. That'll be strike one. Count goes even, 1-1. One one. one ball, one strike, one out. No runners on. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a little too low for ball two. Count goes two and one. Two balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. That's going to hit the outside edge for strike two. Count goes even two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. It's Jared Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch to Aguayo. There's a bouncer towards Matt Gula at second. He gets it to throw to Morgan. There it is. Just a little, little toss to first for out number two. Now at bat, number 22, Next David up is going to be up first baseman, number 22, David De Hoyos, up to the plate. De Hoyos so far is one for two on the afternoon. He had a fly out the last time he faced off against Hyman. He had a sacrifice fly. It was the first batter that Hyman got to face. As he swings the first thing, he sees a high fly towards Winland in right field as he legs it out and dives and can't make contact. As Winland has to pick it back up, he's gonna round second all the way to third. He'll be held up. The throw to third is not in time as Aguayo, excuse me, De Hoyos, slides in with a triple. And that one went right down that right field line, and that drop was just out of the reach of Winland as he made a valiant effort to dive right for that one. Number nine, Garrett Brooks. So with one runner on and two outs, it's going to bring up the DH, number nine, Garrett Brooks. He is two for three on the afternoon. Here's the first pitch from Hyman. Fastball down the middle. Strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike, one runner on on third. Hyman with the pitch. Swing, and it's a high fly towards left field. That's done, and everybody's going to get underneath it. And it looks like Joint says, get away from it. It makes a sliding catch. We're out number three. And the Rangers finally able to get a hit, a third hit at least, off of Hyman. That's one hit, no errors, and one runner left on. But that'll do it for the top of the six. Score remains seven to nothing. Rangers holding on to their lead. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back for the bottom of the sixth. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon Taylor's back on the mound for the Rangers. He's done a pretty good job at keeping the Warrior Bats at bay. He'll be set to face off against leadoff batter to the designated hitter, Reed Saxon. Gus Winland will be batting second, and Evan Dunn will be set to bat third. Go, 
As Reed makes his way up to the plate. So far, he is 0 for 1 on the afternoon. His only second time at bat. And a little bouncer between the mound and first base. That was fielded by Taylor. As he was able to tag up for the out. There's the first pitch. Goes right over home. Definite take there for Saxon. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. Gus Wendland again set to bat second as he is on deck getting loose. Saxon awaits the pitch. Another one. This time it catches the outside edge of the strike zone. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0 and 2. And Reed falling behind early in the count 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes here for Reed Saxon. As he swings at the second one, he can't make contact. As that'll be strike three. He'll go down swinging for out number one. Same location now at that, as number the previous five, two pitches. Wendland. It's going to bring up right fielder number five, Gus Wendland. Wendland hit a pop out towards short back in the third inning. So he is 0 for 1. That was his only other time at bat. Here's his second chance, though, against Taylor as the first pitch is inside. Hits him in the back. As he will be glad to take that one for the team. He will make his way on over to first on the freebie. And the Warriors with the runner on. Their second four, runner on Evan this afternoon. Dunn. It's going to bring up number four, left fielder Evan Dunn. Dunn hit a hard liner towards third back in the third inning. And it was a ground out that way for a final out. He's got one runner on, though, and one out. And here's the pitch from Taylor as he shows bunt. And a quick throw down to first is not in time. It's going to be ball one for Dunn. Count goes one and now. So one ball, no strikes, and one out here for Evan Dunn as he gets set. He's got Gus Winland over at first. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fast ball. It's the outside edge for strike one. Count goes even one and one. So even count, one ball, one strike, one out with one runner on. As Dunn gets set, here's the pitch. And that's inside, and that's going to hit Dunn as well. As another freebie as he'll make his way over to first. Winland will head to second, and here comes top of the order for the Warriors as Jeff the Warriors, Hebert six, is going to make his yeah, way out to the Hebert. plate. Hebert so far, though, is 0 for 2 on the afternoon, and a strikeout swinging and a fly out towards left field on his two outings. He's got two runners on, though, and just one out here in the sixth inning. And the Warriors are going to have to make the most of this one and get something across if they want to chip away at this lead for the Rangers. First pitch, hit high fly towards center field as well as he gets underneath it. And the quick tag up, nope. We thought Winland was going to go as he tagged up and started moving his legs quickly, kind of like the road runner. Uh, he decided to stop immediately and back up to second. So that'll be a fly out towards Next center field Jack for out number two. Which is going to bring up number 28, catcher Jack Brinson up to the plate. Brinson so far 0 for 2 on the afternoon. A couple ground outs. He's got two runners on. Let's see if he can hit something down between second and first as you see a pretty wide opening there. As Taylor awaits the call. Winland's over at second. Dunn is at first. Taylor with the pitch. It's going to be way outside for ball one. Count goes 1-0. Oh. Two runners on here for the Warriors, the most they've had so far this afternoon. As Taylor awaits the call. Jack Brinson at the plate. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch. And that's going to hit right over home plate for strike one. Count goes even one and one. One ball, one strike, and two outs here for Jack Brinson. Two runners on. Here's the pitch. And a quick step off by Taylor. Winland able to get back, so no throw made. We'll get reset, and we'll do it again. Josh Astasio will be on deck. If Brinson can make his way on, we'll see him at the plate next. As it's one ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Going to be outside. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and one. Brinson showing some good discipline at the plate now. Two.
Two balls, one strike, and two outs here for Jack Brinson. Two runners on. Here's the pitch. Brinson gets a piece of it. It's a high fly towards second as that will be brought in for out number three. So a couple base runners, but nothing comes across for the Westwood Warriors. And the Rangers make it out of the sixth inning unscathed. Our score remains 7-0 Rangers with the lead. We'll take a short break, folks. We'll be right back for the final inning. You're listening to Warrior Baseball right here on Vibe Live. Hey, buddy. You say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. All right, folks, seventh inning underway. Jared Hyman's going to be back on the mound here for the Warriors. Having a great showing since he showed up here in the second. Holding them at bay and after a big first and top of the second, if you will, for the Rangers. Uh, they've pretty much been held silent since then. So he'll get the chance to close out this one as he'll be set to fade off, face off against leadoff batter catcher number 28, Ethan Gonzalez for the Rangers. Rangers. Christian Keller will be set Ethan to bat second Gonzalez. with John Garza, third baseman, batting third. So if Hyman can hold the bat silent here for the Rangers, it's going to lead to a must-have big bottom of the seventh for the Warriors. That'll be their last chance, and they're going to have to get seven or more runs across to make this something that they can have a chance to take away from the Rangers. As here's the first pitch. Swung on, it's a liner down the first baseline. It'll go foul. As that'll be strike one for Ethan Gonzalez. Count goes on one. So no balls, one strike. Ethan Gonzalez gets set. Hyman likes the first one. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball, hits the outside edge. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0-2, and, and Hyman getting ahead early over Ethan Gonzalez. Gonzalez so far is 0-1 on the afternoon. Had a strikeout looking in the first. And other than that, pretty much nothing as he gets a piece of it. It goes foul. Count will stay 1-2. and two. Or, excuse me, I'm sorry. That will be too low. <laughs> That'll be ball one. Sorry. One ball, two strikes as Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss there. He gets a piece of it that time. Count will stay one and two. Jared Hyman gets the call. Here's the pitch to Gonzalez. As a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. That'll be out number one. A nice strikeout to start the seventh here for Jared Hyman as it's going to bring up next to bat left fielder number 21, Christian Keller. Keller so far is Rangers, two for three. Christian Keller. Pretty active in the first and second. His third time at bat in the fourth inning. Grounded out into a double play. Good old 5-4-3 to end the inning. As Hyman gets set, here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. It's Hyman doing a good job of getting ahead early. It's no balls, one strike, and one out. Keller makes his way back into the box. Hyman gets the call. Here's the pitch. 
And quick time is called as Brinson calls him off, tells him to take a break real quick. We're going to get reset. Here's your 0-1 pitch from Hyman. A swing, and it's a high fly towards center field. It's going to drop right in front of Jeff Hebert. It's going to be a base hit for Keller as he'll make his way over to first. Now he'll be the lone runner on with one out. And here comes third baseman number eight, John Garza for the Rangers. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be outside for ball one for Garza. Counter go 1-0. It looks like that was an intentional outside throw as Brinson looked immediately towards first to see what Keller was doing. It's one ball, no strikes, and one out. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch. Outside again. That'll be ball two. This time, Brinson wants a quick time as he makes his way up to the mound to have a chit-chat with Hyman. It's two balls, no strikes, one out with one runner on for the Rangers. Here at the top of the seventh, they hold a 7-0 lead over your Westwood Warriors. As Garza gets set, Hyman gets the call. Here's your 2-0 pitch. As there's a fastball hits the outside edge for strike one. Count goes 2 0 as Garza thought about swinging, pulled back, and then didn't like the call as he shook his head a little bit. That's going to be strike one for him as it's two balls, one strike, and one out, one runner on. Hyman gets set. Here's the pitch to Garza. And that's going to be outside. That'll be ball three. Count goes 3 and 1. Ryan Ruff, shortstop, will be on deck here for the Rangers, barring a double play here from Garza. As Hyman gets set, quick check at first. Here's your 3-1 pitch. Swing and a bouncer up the middle. Gula gets it. The toss over to joint. There's one. The toss to first. In time. And a 4-6-3 double play will end the inning. Or in the top of the inning, excuse me. Man, I'm just all over the place today, aren't I? But a nice play defensively by the Warriors. As here comes the bottom of the seventh. Last chance for the Warriors to bring, again, a mountain to overcome. Seven runs to tie this up and force extra innings. Eight runs to come away with the win if they can. Mark Marcus Brandon Taylor is going to get the call for the Rangers. As you see him getting back up warm on the mound. I don't see anybody in the bullpen for Smithson Valley, so I think they're going to be hoping Taylor can finish this one out. And we're going to hang out here, folks. It's going to be a big bottom of the seventh, and it's a big, big inning for the Warriors set to lead off. It's going to be third baseman Josh Estacio. Tate Joint will be batting second, and Matt Gula will be batting third. We've seen these three have extremely hot bats in the past series against Bowie. So far, though, being held silent, Matt Gula, the only one of the three to get a base hit. And Taylor only allowing one hit so far this afternoon, and that is to Matt Gula. As we are set to get this one underway, here comes Josh Estacio again. He is 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Going to fly out towards right field and a grounder towards short. We hope his bat is nice and hot now as he awaits the first pitch from Taylor. And he swings, gets that one. It's a bouncer towards short. It's barehanded. The throw to first is in time. And a nice job by that first baseman. That was number 22, David De Hoyos, as he kept his foot on the bag as he fell forward to hold on to that one. Josh Estacio will be out number one. Next up is going to be Tate Joint, much the same, 0 for 2. Hit a grounder towards second, and he had a strikeout swinging in the fifth. No runners on and one away here, bottom of the seventh. And as Taylor awaits the call, here's a pitch to Joint. Joint hits that one. It's a bouncer back towards the mound, barehanded by Taylor to throw to first in time. And there is out number two. Now 
Now batting number 21, Matthew Gula. So last chance here for the Warriors to get a two-out rally going if they can is second baseman number 21, Matt Gula. He's one for two on the afternoon, a strikeout looking, and then a single way back in the second. Only hit so far this afternoon for the Warriors. As here's the first pitch from Taylor. Gula hits that one towards left center field. That one's going high and deep. It drops between center left and short. That'll be a base hit for Matt Gula as he makes his way to first. And the Warriors starting to get something going now as here comes first baseman, number 13, Ridge Morgan. The D.H. Reed Saxon will be set to bat behind him if Morgan can get on base and keep this going for the Warriors. As here's the first pitch to him with Matt Gula on first. Swings, hits it. It's towards right field. It's going to drop in front of the right fielder. A base hit for Morgan. And the Warriors in business with two runners on as here comes Reed Saxon up to the plate. As Coach Ryder comes out, we might have a switch at DH. We'll see. And it looks like we are going to come out instead. It's going to be Alec Neville. He'll make his way out. Number 22, Alec Neville. Alec Neville, senior. Looking to show that senior leadership as he takes a few warm-up swings here on the left side. He's got Matt Gula at second, Ridge Morgan. Over at first, two outs though, so he's going to have to get a base hit on this one and keep everything going, keep the inning moving. Gus Winland will be set to bat next if Neville can make his way on. Here's the first pitch to him. Swings and pops that one behind him, foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. No balls, one strike and two outs. Neville gets set. Taylor with the pitch. And that's a fastball right over the middle. That'll be called for strike two. Count goes 0-2. And, and the Warriors gonna have to swing at anything that might be deemed a strike here for Neville to keep this alive as he gets a little close to home plate. Kind of hugging it a little bit. Snowballs, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. Here's the pitch. Way outside, that'll be ball one. Count goes one and two. And I missed my opportunity, folks. Man, I was gonna, was gonna say. Oh, man. This is a tight one here, folks. One ball, two strikes, and two outs here for Neville. Two runners on. Taylor. Here's the pitch. That's gonna be outside for ball two. And the moment that I have been waiting for, folks. You ready for this? Two balls, two strikes. Two runners on, and number 22, Alec Neville at the plate. The stars have aligned as he gets set. Taylor gets set. Here is your 2-2 pitch. Neville gets a piece of it. It's a high fly towards right field. It's being cut underneath. It's slowing down, and it's brought in for out number three. And the Rangers are going to take game one after a huge first and second inning by a score of seven to nothing. Our game was a lot closer than what that score is going to suggest here this afternoon, folks. Well, that'll do it here for game one. Going to give one more shout out to our Vibe Live Spring Sports sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or Get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. But that'll do it, folks. Here from Tiger Stadium, the Westwood Warriors fall in game one to the Smithson Valley Rangers by a score of 7 to nothing. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for game two between these two teams as I will be here at 3.30-ish, 4-ish. I think first pitch is at 4.30, so I'll be here streaming right before then. And we'll get everything ready to go. If you do have any questions, anything concerns you might have, be sure to send me an email. That can be reached at aja.vipe at gmail.com, and that's vipe, V-Y-P-E. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have or give a shout-out here in our next game. But that'll do it for me here, folks. Until tomorrow, have a good night. <laughs>